The future of digital asset mining calls for top technical talent. Enhance your ASIC education with Foundry's hands-on courses. Led by veteran industry instructors, Foundry's three-day mining intensive and five-day mining technician academy programs cover a range of topics, from identifying issues and troubleshooting common hardware failures to coursework covering Bitcoin's global impact. Open to enthusiasts and professionals alike, visit www.foundryacademy.com to learn more and sign up for the course that's right for you. Welcome back to the Mining Pod for another week of News Roundup. Joined again by Matt Kimmel. We're back from our holiday break. I hope everyone missed us at least a little bit. Matt, how was your holiday? It was great. It's good to be back. Happy New Year. Mm -hmm. Happy New Year to all our listeners. Do us a solid and give us a rating or a share of this podcast to a friend. It helps us out a lot. And Matt and I, we like to feel good about ourselves, so it can help us out. Quite a bit in a few ways. Today, we got a few stories on the docket, including some from the holiday season we did not cover because we were off air. We're going to start with the Genesis and Silvergate layoffs. Then we're going to move over to Celsius and their uh, involvement with Core Scientific and finish up talking about the Argo and Galaxy digital news, which happened about two weeks ago at this point. But I think it's relevant to bring up since we've talked about it so many times on this podcast. Let's kick off with the Silvergate and Genesis news. Silvergate and Genesis are two different entities, but they both operate in a very similar space. Silvergate is a crypto bank of sorts. They have traditional banking partnerships or banking relationships. And they also have this crypto angle where they onboard stable coins, onboard a lot of banking partners out there. Yesterday, they announced that they're laying off about 200 employees and that they had $8 billion plus in withdrawals following the collapse of FTX. Uh, they also were downgraded this morning after their shares of their company dropped 40 percent at the same time yesterday we got news about the dcg empire which is also having some issues genesis trading and lending which is one of the largest subsidiaries of dcg uh, announced that they did another round of layoffs uh, about 30 percent and this follows on layoffs that ex they experienced this summer and a change in leadership this summer people are looking at this and wondering is Genesis about to crack and explode? And that's the crown jewel to Barry Silbert's empire. So more news to follow there. Matt, I'm going to throw this one over to you for your take on it. The mining industry has a lot of relationships with these lenders because they took out money in order to make mining facilities. Yeah, I think Silvergate's probably the biggest connection to the financial industry that Bitcoin has. And we all know that Bitcoin does not need the banking sector, right? It does not need traditional finance, but businesses that build and use Bitcoin often do have a connection to the financial system. And the biggest one out there is Silvergate, right? So, I mean, major news and the the story of like the connection to the banking industry goes back pretty deep in Bitcoin's uh, history. You know, Tether came around in like 2013 and part of its origination story was to basically have a, a dollar connection. And I mean, they struggled to get... Banking access, crypto industry has a while struggled to get banking access because they need dollars on hand for a lot of different reasons. So I got the list here of like a lot of the, the partnerships for Silvergate just to like explain the significance here. You may not know Coinbase, Binance US, Gemini, Genesis, as you discussed, Paxos, Bitstamp, RSX, Circle. I mean, it's pretty deep there. And we didn't even talk about the, the miners to your point before. Um, I mean, if if this actually is trouble for DCG, by the way, like the like calamity, carnage, whatever you want to call it, that's happened in the crypto market all of last year will get significantly worse, like b bigger blow up than FTX. Right. Yeah. Just to jump in there, I think for people who are not familiar with all the firms you just listed, they, they probably know Coinbase, but maybe they don't know Silvergate or Genesis. Genesis is a sister company to Foundry, which Foundry is uh, one of the largest, well, it is the largest pool in Bitcoin mining right now, but they also operate facilities. They also operate a brokerage desk for ASICs. Uh, they operate a lot of different aspects in the mining space. So this definitely has a clear uh, correlation to the mining industry, or there's a clear path for contagion to continue for Genesis. And then for Silvergate, also there's, there's a lot of different ways that contagion can bleed into the mining industry. Yeah. And um, let's see, Marathon just uh, extinguished part of their debt credit facility with um, Silvergate as well. It, I don't think it's that big of news for the Silvergate story, but it's sort of just 
more speaks to the the connection, right? And I think um, tangentially related, just going to tease, I feel like this may be kind of some foreshadowing for the mining uh, industry and a lot of players getting into 2023, lower debt, get ready for that halving that's kind of palpably approaching in early 2024, right? Mining revenue is going to be cut even more. You know, you want as little business ongoing business expenses as possible outside of just your marginal cost of generating coins, your cash cost of mining, right? Yeah, definitely. Let's pick up the Marathon news, which related to Silvergate. So Marathon had two different financial products out with Silvergate. They had a term loan and a revolving line of credit, and they have paid off entirely the revolving line of credit. Both of those uh, financial products were backed by Bitcoin that Marathon was holding onto its balance sheet. So it was an over collateralized loan. The issue with that, and you can go back to our podcast actually on this show back in November with Charlie Schumer uh, or Shoemaker of, of Marathon Digital, who talked about this. The issue with using Bitcoin and collateralized loan is that you don't really have a lot of control over your own balance sheet because you have to keep that Bitcoin there to prop up the loan. And so Marathon was making some moves to pay off that loan and get those Bitcoin back, just holding on to its balance sheet. And so they did that successfully. Uh, so Marathon honestly looks like it's coming into 2023 with a very strong balance sheet. They've made a few moves that have been beneficial. Still looking to see more machines going racks. They're estimating about 23 exahash by sometime next year, which is a big move for now the second largest Bitcoin miner by market cap in the United States. Any thoughts on Marathon? Well, I think you know this, this again is just going to be a part of the strategy. I think across the board heading into. Um, the having that's like just really not so far away. But, you know, the public sentiment from investors was really positive. Marathon's stock price kind of store, soared after this news. So I think, I mean, this is good. Marathon had a lot of kind of like rough public image for a while there when they were trying to migrate and they had a lot of I- idle inventory. Um, they successfully did that. They maintained and held on to a lot of their coins. And I think this is just another feather in their cap. So good for the Marathon team. Yeah, we'd love to see miners moving into 2023 with strong balance sheets. Let's hope that continues. Speaking of miners with not strong balance sheets, however, let's turn to Core Scientific and Celsius. Uh, we found out yesterday that Celsius and Core Scientific came to an agreement and that Core Scientific would be unplugging 37,000 Celsius miners, which have been running at Core Scientific facilities since Celsius filed for Chapter 11 back in May, or was it June of this year? Uh, the news here, of course, is the fact that Core Scientific is also in Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and they've opted to, to continue mining Bitcoin while they go through those proceedings. Chapter 11, of course, means you're restructuring the company. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going under, and they have the ability to decide to continue mining Bitcoin, and they have decided to continue doing that. A large part of Core Scientific's operations is hosting, and uh, Celsius was the largest hosted client by Core Scientific. So this frees up a lot of space for Core Scientific. And why would they do this? So you might think that Core Scientific wants the cash flows from Celsius since it's a partnership there. And the question is, well, maybe not because the rate just wasn't that good. Uh, you know, The rate of energy across the United States has been going up. And if you lock in a fixed rate and you have a hosted client there, then you have to honor that contract in many uh, cases. And then there's just also like the cost of doing business. Uh, and then also looking at these machines for the Celsius side, as you said earlier, Matt, before we started the podcast, doesn't look like they were really mining in the green most of the time with the machines they have on hand. Yeah, I mean, it's clear that uh, hosting for Celsius wasn't profitable for Core Scientific. I mean, through the bankruptcy, there, there's been this back and forth right between the two companies. But through the bankruptcy court system, Core Scientific said it was kind of an emergency to shut these off. I think they were taking like a, a monthly like two million dollar loss. I, I was looking at. The hosting agreement that commenced in uh, 2021 between Celsius and Core, and it looks like the the service rate for um, dollars per kilowatt hour is was six cents, and the machines they were using were M30 S pluses. So, did a quick calculation. Like those machines, if you just look at the cash costs, can sort of generate uh, revenue at at a hash price of like five and a half cents. So, like. In today's market, like that's doing okay, but you don't take into account all of the other expenses that Core has going on. It's clear that hosting has been like a really thinly margined kind of aspect of the of the mining market, and just as 
Celsius is the biggest um, client for core on the hosting side. If they're not making money, that's a huge kind of, you know, deep cut to their uh, operating revenue. So, I mean, it seems like a major win for core. Um, You know, it seems like they're making money, as you said, through their self mining operations. So hopefully they make it out and, and do well. Yeah, hosting mining is is a tough business to be a part of. I mean, Compass, which operates this podcast, obviously is uh, very much so in the hosting business. And we can say from our history and just from working in this space, it's really hard to be a hosted miner. Uh, it's really hard to host and it's really hard to be on the other side of that as well. Um, you do it, obviously, because you want to be there when Bitcoin rips up and you need to have your Bitcoin miners online in order to do that. And not everyone has the ability to go build a rockdale facility like riot or go build some other site so you you find someone to host with and i do think that there's going to be some changes to the hosting game in 2023 in 2021 2022 there's so much demand to get asics on racks and just scoop up that bitcoin while you could i don't think the competition sharpened other people i think that a lot of people were just like throwing asics on racks wherever they could and i think in 2023 we're going to see a change there right we're going to see more professionalization we're going to see firmware updates we're going to see remote ASIC management. We're going to see like a lot of these perks that people have been wanting for the last two years actually come into fruition because there's going to be more competition among hosted clients. So that's just one aside. Just looking at the, the hosted part of this is definitely interesting because as you said, this wasn't profitable for Core Scientific to be hosting these Celsius units. Uh, and then Celsius, I'm sure, had its own problems with it as well. So I think that this, on like a macro level, we're going to see some changes on the, the hosted side of things. Let's depart from there, though, and go to our last story for the day, which is actually from a few weeks ago. And that is when Argo Blockchain announced that it had sold its Helios site in Texas to Galaxy Digital, a crypto merchant bank in the space, with a pretty large mining, mining arm at this point. This happened on December 28th. A lot of people were looking for something like this to happen for quite a while because Argo blockchain had been having some problems going back to the summer where their balance sheet was loaded up with too much debt. It'd make about $4 million in monthly debt payments. A lot of people were looking at this and being like, this is unsustainable unless they can get a strategic investment. They weren't really able to dilute equity shareholders anymore. And they were basically selling a lot of ASICs at discount. It was a tough place to be in. And so they came to the final decision to sell their Helio site, which they've been building for quite a while. It's supposed to be their site, like their uh, crown jewel. But according to Peter Wall, the CEO of Argo said, this is a move to allow us to live yet another day. I'm going to throw this story over to you for some commentary or thoughts on the acquisition by Galaxy. I think Peter Wall summed it up. Like Galaxy is the knight in shining armor that saved Argo. Um, So great for them. Kudos, right? They had a strategic investor pull out, I recall. Uh, months ago, and they've been shedding part of their uh, mining machines to try to generate just any cash as possible to extinguish their debt. And they finally sort of came across the deal now to just put it all behind them. It shores up their balance sheet, as you said. They're much more liquid. You know, in the process, they had to get rid of a site, but long term, I think this is, you know, survival for Argo. And, you know, they're going to continue. Um, hosting at the site, right? It's just now going to be sort of owned and operated by a uh, galaxy. And then um, as well, what's the the other part of this deal? Oh, a major refinance, right? With them as well. So galaxy, I think just sort of saw an, an opportunity um, and took it. And I think it saved Argo and that's good for both, hopefully. Yeah, it's cool to look at both stories for both miners. Argo blockchain found in 2017, Made a lot of moves during the last two years to grow during the bull market. Uh, well, I should say the bull market has been over for a year or so. You know, they made the moves in 2020 and 2021. And those moves in retrospect were not the right moves. They were very similar moves to a lot of other players in the industry, right? Like buying facilities in Texas, buying machines, trying to get your hash rate up, and projections to the market. And in a lot of ways that rewarded them in the stock market, but it just wasn't wasn't quite right for... Um, the mining industry. And so that now they've had to make some strategic moves. I'm happy to see them survive and live another day. And I think they will. I think it's good for miners to survive. I think they're oftentimes in the mining industry, we kind of cheerlead as people go down. But that is not what we do here on this show at very least. I want people to, to keep surviving. Um, so congrats to Argo for the sale and for the new hosting solution. 
for the Galaxy Digital team, uh, pretty impressive. They started in about February of 2021, I believe. And now they have a decent hash rate. I don't have it off the top of my head, but this facility has the ability to go up to 800 megawatts. I think it's starting around 100 to 200 megawatts. So they have a very nice facility to be able to grow. Uh, they also have a lot of minor financing deals with ASICs, and they can just start purchasing ASICs as well to fill up this facility basically at the bottom. So pretty savvy move from the Galaxy digital team. Yeah, just to add numbers to how large this site is, the hosting agreement is two years and it's it's close to 24,000 S19Js. So certainly a lot of hash rate coming out of this facility and in this hosting deal. Yeah, it's great to see like teams survive this because it takes so long to put these facilities together. And it's just a, such a waste of capital if they go under. So I love the fact that they were able to come up with a savvy move that helped out both, uh, both teams. And hopefully they can keep growing together. I think that's a, a very savvy move. Uh, but yeah, we'll be having Galaxy Digital on the mining pod in the next two weeks or so to go over the deal, which I'm excited to talk about with them shortly. But we can wrap it up there. Thanks to everyone for listening. Again, if you enjoy the show, please give us a rating on your favorite podcast application. It really helps out the show or share it on social media if you enjoyed it. Lastly, if you have any thoughts, feel free to reach out to us at media at compassmining.io. We definitely read everything that's sent into us or comment on our YouTube page or on whatever podcast application you use. But from Matt and I, thanks for watching. See ya. Cheers.